this is the story of a man pursuing a childhood dream. But it is also the older story of a drum that was changed into something different. The pan. <laughs> My name is Chief Bowie, Sonny Bowie, and this is my story, which begins before my father's father's father. Africa, not just in Nigeria, is to spread all over the place, just like it is in Trinidad. Anywhere you turn to, you see a pan band. Fest at 77, the second world black and African festival of arts and culture held in Nigeria, brought together 15,000 participants from over 70 countries. Yeah, I was eight years old, you know, back then in 1977 when the first band from Trinidad uh, came to Nigeria for the Festival of Arts and Culture, Festac 77, you know. Um, <clears throat> first, I heard them play on the television, you know. It was on Thursdays, every Thursday by 8 p.m. They were always on the television playing, you know. And then, um, uh, since Festac Town was five minutes to ten minutes drive away from home, you know, I decided to go to Festac Town, you know, to visit them, you know, to watch this band play. You know, funny enough, that was the only thing I was interested in, you know, in that carnival or in that festival. The Trinidad and Tobago All-Stars, rehearsing at the festival village, where every night groups of performers found themselves putting on informal shows. It was perhaps here, on this level, more than in the formal surroundings of the theatre and other official venues, that the participants, blacks and Africans from all over the world, came into direct contact with each other. All I was interested in was just the steel band, you know. And so I went there, visited the steel band, watched them perform every time. It was the same in Trinidad. I visited the bands while they were practicing for Panorama. There were crowds of people who had dropped by to meet friends or just hang out and listen to rehearsals. It's just what you did. Now, I see that that's how the bands work their magic on you, just as All Stars had beguiled me back in Festac Village when it planted in me a desire to join the steel band movement. I have the story of um, a good friend of mine, Funshai of Gina, who works at the university as well, who when he was in 1977, when there was Festa, he was supposed to go to Jamaica to do his graduate work. And during Festa, he heard Steel Band. And he made up his mind, he said when he heard it, he said, wherever that music comes from, that's where I'm going. 
So in a way, he left Nigeria. He followed Pan, right? And ended up in Trinidad, not in Jamaica. Yeah, the panorama I attended in Trinidad um, for the first time was an eye-opener. It was very revealing. It, um, it gave me a lot of ideas, new ideas as to what to do. And uh, when I went back to Nigeria, you know, I started working on them. The sizes of the bands, the various bands, the performances and everything was like a new beginning. Because I didn't just come here to enjoy panorama. I came to look at ways I could improve and promote Pan better and easier in Africa. Panorama, the grand annual steel band competition. This is the main event for all steel bands in Trinidad and Tobago. For three weekends, spread over one month before Carnival. A feast for the steel band glutton. More than the eye can see and the ear can hear. Bands from all over the country come to a large open-air stage in a huge park. Some arrive on trucks. Others are pushed from nearer panyards in large caravans of instrument racks, like military convoys that clog the streets of Port of Spain. And if you think Pan is about Caribbean beaches and yellow bird tourist songs, think again. Pan has the complex artistry of any other modern music. You know, when you have a band of about nine players, you know, and here you see bands of 120 players, you know, so we've not started Panorama in Nigeria. I think we're just warming up. I've been trying to promote Pan in Nigeria and I'm here to look for ways, you know, through which we could promote Pan mm. in Nigeria, as well as get the history of Pan right. in relation to um, the cultures between Trinidad, mm -hmm. African Trinidad and, and Africa itself. Really, I mean, there are very, very rooted links between Africa and Trinidad, as far as Pan goes. Slave trade defined the modern world. Between the 16th and the 19th centuries, 11 to 20 million Africans were captured by other Africans and shipped off by Europeans to be worked to death in the plantations of the Americas and the Caribbean. The First Nations were wiped out in the Caribbean and an industrial revolution generated in Europe and North America a black diaspora was planted in the heart of white Western civilization, where African culture would transform its experience into the greatest 20th century art form, popular music. To understand that, however, I had to first put my finger in the wound. You're welcome, how are you? Okay, you're welcome to the Brazilian Brothers of Siri Kabbalah. When you look around the compound, you realize that people live in the compound today. But all the rooms that people live in this compound today were all barracoons. A barracoon means a slave cell. There are 40 rooms in this compound, and a room has two rooms. During the slave trade, in a room, they kept 40 slaves. We are going inside later. Some of the items we have here, we're using as chain for slaves. That one. In Badagri, the value of an umbrella in Badagri, during the slave trade, was 40 slaves. 40 human being was using this chain for an umbrella. A bottle of gin. The value of a bottle of gin was 10 slaves in Badagri. The big cannon gun was using this chain for 100 slaves. The small cannon gun, 40 slaves. The value of a Dane gun was also 40 slaves. As early as 1450, the Europeans realized that it was impossible for them to come to Africa and forcefully capture the slaves. What they did was that they befriended some of the African chiefs. In the beginning, Slaves were sold to the Europeans were criminals, adding criminals. Slaves have been sentenced to death, rapists, kidnappers. Those were the type of slaves they were sold in the beginning until the Europeans, because of the need for slaves in the Americas, began to push the African chiefs and entice them with some of these items. There were other items they were used in exchange for slaves, but a lot of people find it 
very very difficult to believe that items like that were actually used in exchange for human being. Many didn't survive the Middle Passage, and the descendants of those who did it still find it painful to contemplate this horror. Sometimes, I am overwhelmed by anger and shame. Yeah, today I was at the National Archives in Trinidad and um, went through the slave register. And um, I saw, I observed rather that um, most of the names were changed. You know, so it's quite difficult and painful, you know, to realize that even if you want to trace, you know, the roots of most of those slaves, you could not. My very first time to train that, I, I just laid low to study, you know, the people of train that, to see if they had any bitterness in them, mm -hmm. especially towards um, pure Africans, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> you know, as a result of, you know, the slave trade and all that. The whites thought African drumming noisy, monotonous and maybe even demonic. They were terrified the drum dances could be used to plan revolts, so they passed laws against them. Slaves were brutally flogged for drumming. They still persisted. Why? Because those rhythms gave us the physical and psychic strength to endure. Without it, the slaves could never have survived the ordeal. Our music was, as the rest of the world has since discovered, food for the soul. Many people came, especially from the French islands. They were French planters and they were African slaves. They came in the thousands. When slavery was ended, they used to celebrate the freedom by having a street procession called the Kambule procession. This procession was supported by drumming. Talk about the drumming, the guitar. The history, history of how it all started, yes, you know, up to the point where you had the still ones, yes, from the roots, from the roots, yeah. from the slave trade. Where they come, no, not not from that point, from mm -hmm. when they arrived, when they arrived. And then, you know, the traditional drumming, you yes, know, that they brought from Africa. Yes, yes. You know. Start with Ibo as one of the um, tribes. In Yoruba, Igbo means a forest. Aye means the world. So it, it, it could be like the forest of the world. That is, that is what we um, know about uh, the Igbo here in our country. Okay, but from what I heard, you know, the rhythm is Yoruba. Mm -hmm. um, the style of singing as well is Yoruba. And then if we go back to history, you know, um, from where the slaves, you know, were rooted, they were Yoruba towns. So, um, how we have it here, because when they caught all these slaves, they mix up everybody. Exactly. <laughs> so you get a little, a little piece exactly. of every, everybody, everything. Yes. Everything exactly. Get a little and that now, there was a commission of inquiry. Among other things, the commission banned the use of African drums. So we're looking now for a new instrument to replace the drum in the street procession. Who the lion? I don't know. Who the lion? I don't know. Who the lion? I don't know. Slavery 
forcibly mixed different cultures, so the transported Africans had to blend different, half-forgotten practices and improvise the rest. That was how they invented the true Creole art, which is the art of improvisation. In music, in dance, and here, in drums. You say split. So when the bamboo split, the masqueraders looking for rhythm. And what they did? They took up dustbins at the side of the road. The empty people, garbage, took the bins and they played that all day. That's how iron entered the dance. Any piece of metal container on which a rhythm could be drummed was recruited. And on those pots and pans and dustbins, young men of Trinidad produced two notes, then four, eight, twelve, twenty-four. Competition sparked innovation. By then, these metal musicians had switched to the larger, stronger 55-gallon steel drums used in the Trinidad oil industry. Nigeria too has an oil industry, a much larger one than Trinidad. <laughs> 